I just spent the last 30 days building a huge Minecraft village all in an attempt to top every city I've ever made, filling it with crazy details and places for villagers to live and work. To make things even harder, I'm going to do it all in one month and with absolutely no planning. So I hope you enjoy the full story of how I built this village in Minecraft Hardcore. Welcome back to the Hardcore world. If you're new here, all you got to know is that we spent the last 356 days in this world building up quite a bit of infrastructure. We have our starter base here, our first house of the village over here, some crop fields, and then a portal up on that hill. You're pretty much caught up now. What I want to do today is tackle one of our first buildings and really get down the style and scale we want this village to be. I mean, this house kind of helps, but I think we can do a lot more. In between episodes, I laid out a ton of different layouts here, which we can pick from to kind of start our base. And I think I want to tackle this one here today on the outskirts of the city. This is going to be kind of like a guard building. Whoever lives here is sort of guarding the village. I've really been wanting to build with blackstone, which you have quite a bit of from last episode, and also some white blocks. So we have a white black contrast for our build. I think we'll also use quite a bit of dark oak wood. We don't really have a whole lot right now. So a good first project could be heading up here to my new logging area and working on chopping down some trees. Except we only have two dark oak saplings. Are you kidding me? Looks like we've got a bit of a walk on our hands here. Actually, I do got this horse though, so we can use this. This horse is so slow. This is kind of annoying me. This isn't even really worth it, but oh well. I was pretty sure there was dark oak. Oh, there it is. Right over there. And there's a whole lot I want to say about the series we're doing. I'll leave that for a little later on. Right now, let's just collect some dark oak wood. All right, I've got four stacks and a bunch of saplings in case we run out, so I think we should be good. Unfortunately, it looks like my I lost my horse. That's too bad. I think he's gone forever. I think we should not even look for him. Such a shame. I really, really like that horse a lot. Dark Oak checked off the list. I think we should move on to some white colored blocks like calcite and diorite. And the only place we're going to find that is underground. I actually remember somewhere down one of these tunnels, I actually found an amethyst geode. Uh, yep, right here, right here. And there's still quite a bit of calcite for me to mine out of here. This series will also really give me the chance to dive in to show people how I build because I get so often asked for tutorials, but... I don't really have a good way to present those until now. And what's it really inspired me, honestly, is all these upcoming YouTubers like Ryan Trahan or Sam Sulik, who are really just authentic personalities on camera and are not super overly edited. I think that's what I've been enjoying watching lately. So I wanted to have a go at it myself. But up next, we need to find some diorite. There's some right over here in this cave. Let's grab this real quick. Diorite and calcite all checked off the list. I do want to try to make some concrete though. Oh, I actually have a bit of sand and gravel. Okay, we might actually have enough here. Let's see. Oh wait, we already have some in there. And then if we just grab some white dye, how much can we make? Quite a bit. This should be maybe enough. And this light gray concrete powder will take some of that too. So what we got to do now is do a little bit of pillaring. Let some water flow down and we can mine it all right back up. And then one final thing I need, I should have gotten it back when we were down there. I need to grab some deep slate. I'll be right back. Alrighty, we got our deep slate, but did I mention I I hate this layout we have? Or I don't hate it. It's just not big enough. Um, how about we just add a little bit to it actually? Maybe for this little area here, which is gonna be a tower, we can make it a little bit more of a uh, decorated base like this. I'll keep messing with it, but I feel like we're on the right track here. There are just so many like dark gray blocks in the game that I feel like I have to mess around with them to see if I can find something that looks kind of unique. I think we're kind of getting there. I also, I think this is looking good. I also want to add some different blocks for more shading here. More just darker blocks, but I think these look good. Here we go. I like this a lot. Let's put all our deep slate blocks away and grab some dark oak and our lighter blocks. I'm going to go ahead and lay out some pillars here, but I think we should start by just finding the height of this tower. So let's start building up. Minecraft builds always have that phase where they just look horrible and you have no clue what you're doing. 
but it usually works out in the end and I'm hoping it works out in the end like this time. I'm pretty confident with this little section here. So let's fill in the walls and I made this four blocks. Oh no, this is going to be really difficult to build right. We'll see. I think I can pull it off. I'm looking at this build and I'm actually seeing like a gatehouse here of having a gate here, which will work perfectly with what we were trying to do. So maybe we'll transition over to sort of more of an idea like that. Okay. I'm starting to like this a lot more. It's really coming together now, I think. So let's just put up the rest of these walls. All right. All right. This is not looking too bad at all. Let's go ahead and add in some base shapes to the roof completely undetailed just to figure out how it should look. I actually want to put a watchtower at the top of this tower here. So we're going to have to grab a few new blocks here. I have an idea for something. I've done something similar before. I'll show you here in a second. I'm copying down a design here for something that I built at the end of my last hardcore season. Kind of forgot. We're probably going to use quite a bit of spruce wood in the detailing of this. So we should go ahead and grow one of those big trees because we have no spruce wood. Now we have a lot of spruce wood or at least we're about to. Let's build up some pillars here. Okay, hop in free cam to take a look at this. I like that a lot. So let's go ahead and put a little spiked roof on this if we can. And then I'm feeling like we can even add some sort of pattern up here. We'll see how it turns out. There's still a few different rough edges I can see here that we kind of need to work out. So if we just... Here we go. A lot of the fine tuning is done and it's pretty much a blank canvas now to begin detailing. And I think the most obvious first edition would be some windows, you know? So let's punch some holes in our build. With this even section, we'll do a two by two window here in the middle. Let's go ahead and make this gatehouse an actual gate real quick just with some spruce fences i think these look the best this should pretty much keep mobs out other than maybe we can just put some carpet down there at the bottom i think we should go ahead and right away pave our pathway through here i think we'll make it out of coarse dirt i think that's what the paths inside the city will be our next step here is to figure out how to add some color to this thing because to be honest it's all just really dark bland colors so Little pops of color, maybe from flower bushes or leaves, or maybe even a, like a brick chimney could look really cool. Let's start with some of these azaleas. There we go. There's kind of this awkward spot here in the roof, and I think putting a chimney there would really help break it up and kind of smooth out that rough edge. There we go. We need to head up here to the top of the tower and then place our bell right there. That way we can warn the village of any attacks from whatever's over there, I guess. Gonna place these iron bars along here just like this. The next thing we definitely have to do is this interior here. Although it's pretty small, building interiors for a lot of these houses is really gonna add so much life to the village. And my idea for the floor is actually gonna be bamboo blocks. Let's see how these look. Yeah, this is the perfect color for this area. However, there's a window like way up here. So I think it only makes sense if there's a little area upstairs stairs too. Staircase up. And then what I think we'll do is we'll use dark oak as our walls. Not quite sure what to do the, for the roof. So I think I might just put some beams across like this. There, 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 there. Come on. Ugh. I think for more contrast, we'll add a mangrove wall right here. And maybe actually some more mangrove just in this in general down here. Or I just really like this texture in general, to be honest. So let's just rip out this whole wall and place mangrove for it all. But I still want that mangrove in here somewhere. So I'm going to put it right here and maybe up here too because this is like a guard building there's a few details i want to add i'm going to add a anvil up here for our, our little pot and then down here we're going to have two armor stands both of which are going to have full iron armor if there's one thing we have a lot of it's iron thanks to our farm so i'm not afraid to use a bunch of it in this build today's episode is going to involve digging down and building a cactus farm in this outline here and then building up a really cool design that i'm yet to come up with but we'll work on it together after building this entryway in the last episode i'm really excited to keep working on this village so let's figure out exactly what we need and we're actually going to need green dye for this house a little bit. So I think we should build our cactus farm right away. Pretty sure I had cactus. Yep, there's some. Let's dig down and build a room a little bit into the ground here. Place sand every few blocks like this in a grid pattern. I think we'll do four by four. Now we gotta place down fences every couple blocks to break all of the cactus. And then we need a ton of different water sources flowing down into the middle. And then to get the cactus out of here, I think we should pipe it down 
here somewhere. All right, so I've got this water column here, which drops down here, which goes all the way across here. And if we throw 57 torches in here, let's see how many of them we get. Here they come. 57. Perfect. All right, this farm works flawlessly. All right, there's a few blocks here we'll have to hide with like decorations or something, but overall... This cactus farm works perfect. So if we put what cactus we have in here right now. Oh, wait. These totally aren't going to grow, are they? Hold on. We need to clear this out. Okay, so what we'll do for these ones over here, because they need covered up, we'll just raise up the ground a little bit, actually. While we're waiting for this to start working, I think we should head over and start figuring out what materials we're going to be using. The reason we even built that cactus farm is because I want to use a green roof with a combination of moss blocks, which we're going to have to gather and green wool, which we need to die for. We're also going to use cobblestone, which I have plenty of, and we're going to have to gather some tough and oak wood, as well as some spruce wood, too. Let's get our resource gathering kicked off with a whole bunch of tough. I use tough quite a bit, and I really like the texture, and I can't wait for them to add all the new variants, but for now, we can just stick to the regular tough. It's still cool, too. Let's drop back into our mine. I feel like this thing's going to be fully mined. Ooh. I feel like this thing's gonna be fully mined out by the time we finish this series. We're gonna need a lot of different stones to build all this up. Is that it? Two diamonds? I'll take it, I guess. Ooh, there's more, there's more. More diamonds, all right. More diamonds, more diamonds. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 28 diamonds just from this 30 seconds of mining. Not bad. That should be more than enough tough right there. Let's head back over to our village. I always forget I have this like detached camera thing. It's kind of cool. We should be using it more often, to be honest. Just imagine when this village is done someday, like with the sunset right here, this looks so cool already just imagine houses all around here but let's stash away our diamonds and of course our tough sleep real quick so we don't get destroyed immediately by mobs and see if our cactus farm produced any cactus i must have been out of range or it's not working there's always that option too no this is definitely how you build it i was just probably way out of range that's all right we'll check back here in a second and in the meantime let's go ahead and mine up some oak wood i think we'll do a little bit of a time lapse for this one Oak wood checked off the list. That should be enough. I hope four stacks is probably enough. And our farm finally produced some cactus. That's a good sign. It's going to take a little while to get all that we need, but that's all right. Now it's time to just start grinding spruce wood, my favorite. Hopefully, we don't even have enough saplings to grow a big tree yet, so I'm going to have to just mine these for now. Here we go. Let's tear down a couple of these big trees. All right, let's chop down these two trees. There we go. That's probably enough, but we can do one more. More than enough spruce wood all gathered up. It's actually relatively easy to gather moss. We just got to find somewhere that's going to be covered up. How about in this building? Actually, we probably shouldn't destroy our building like this. Let's go over to a cave or something. We have this annoying canyon here that we can make deeper if we want to. Yeah, let's do that. All we have to do is place a piece of bone meal down, a moss down, and then bone meal it, and we can just start digging down with this. And just like that, we've got plenty of moss. Now we just need this cactus farm to work, or maybe we're gonna have to go to a desert or something. And let's hold on. Can you combine blue and yellow dye? Oh, you can't. That's stupid. All right, let's go to a desert. If only I had a horse. It's not like I left him behind last episode or anything. Wait, let me just be smart and just make a portal to it in the nether. I calculated, I think it's 1455.6 are the coordinates we need to put the new nether portal. And we can finally get to use for this portal. Finally use this one from our last real episode. It's going to be over lava, isn't it? I just know it. This is not risky, I promise you. This is completely safe. I'm not about to lose my hardcore world here. Okay, we got to put the portal right here. And come on, give me a desert. This is the desert, I think. Just way underground. Alrighty, in the desert, let's go ahead and grab some cactus. 49 should be plenty. I'm just going to head on back. All right, let me smelt this up real quick. Let's dye up all of these sheep so we can get a ton of green wool. Hopefully that's enough wool we can always come back for more let's go ahead and get started with building this up i think i think we will start with a cobblestone and tough base here and it'll go pretty tall however i think this wing over here will be pretty short and then we'll do sort of a gradient here adding some shading and i'm going to experiment with some andesite along the sides like that i think that'll turn out good all right here's our foundation built up let's get some pillars similar to what we did over here but this time out of strip spruce all right here's the spruce frame let's go ahead and add in our oak wood and see how it looks
All right, this is looking great and it's fitting in pretty good to the city. So let's go ahead and add a green roof to this thing. We'll start with our moss and then add some detail later on. Here's all the roof frames built up. They look good, but like this is going to be kind of hard to figure out. Let's go ahead and add some shading to this roof just pretty subtly with some green concrete and green wool. We'll see how it turns out. The roof on this is looking great. I really like all this shading. If we want to bring this house to the next level though, we're going to have to add some doors and windows into this so we don't just have a bunch of holes in the house. Let's put in these windows. Here's one, three and four, five and six, seven, number eight, and window nine. Really difficult to build like this. All right, that works. I want to add plants to all these windows, so let's actually try something new. Let's try a block I have never really used before, these cherry leaves. I think these will look pretty good, however the color on them is kind of bright, so let's use signs to kind of hide a little bit of it to make it look like it's in a pot. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Those leaves are such a bright color, but I think they kind of work. I might end up changing them out, but I think they kind of work. One thing I do want to do is add a deep slate chimney right there. Yep, this works right here. That looks pretty good, actually. I think I'm going to use warped wood for these doors. I think it'll look cool. At this point, I'm just going to go around and add a few more little details like this. I'm really happy with how this area is looking. However, can you see a problem with our gatehouse? If you look over here, it's pretty obvious to tell that this city is not at all defended. This, you can just walk right in. So we need to build some sort of small wall design that'll keep people out, but it's also pretty subtle. So hopefully it doesn't block the view of any of the other houses. I'd love to make it out of granite, so let's find some. There's got to be something in this cave, surely, right? Yep, right over here. Let's make a small little wall across here. Oh yeah, that's so much better. You can still technically get in, but just don't worry about that. We also have this area here, which we're gonna go ahead and add some coarse dirt to. I think it'd be cool to make this sort of a marketplace area of our city at some point. And we'll have to come back and do a lot more later, but for now, I think all the detail we'll do with this area is just building a little well. I don't know how to build this. How do I? There we go. And here we go. We just got done building up this gatehouse and this cactus factory right here. And today there's another very important build we need to add to this world. And that is going to be right up here. I want to build a library right here in order to store our enchantment table, which is currently down here in this ugly mob grinder. So we can just pick this up right now, I think, and move it over in that area. And I also want to make use of these new chisel bookshelves in order to store all of our enchanted books we have. But this build's going to be a little bit tricky because we're trying out a new block combination today. I want to try to combine the packed mud colors and textures like that with the red mangrove wood as a roof. I think this is going to look really cool, but it's going to be tricky to gather all these resources and completely pull it off. Because in this series, I don't plan anything beforehand. I have no clue what this build is going to look like at the end, but we'll certainly find out. Let's go check our storage room, which really needs an upgrade here. We need to build something around this maybe even today well, let's see we do got we got quite a bit of mangrove here actually that's gonna be enough mangrove but in terms of mud which is over here uh that's i'm not sure that's gonna be enough we're probably gonna have to we're probably gonna have to head over to a mangrove swamp and see if we can't get some more so let me empty my inventory real quick and see if we can't head to the mangrove swamp Here's the swamp. Wait, where's the mangrove again? Am I in the wrong place? I better not be in the wrong place. Let me grab some cow's I'm over here so I can make some more books. But I think the mangrove swamp should hopefully be like around here. There we go. There's the mangrove swamp. And it's been a while since I've really been to one of these. I kind of grabbed some mangrove propagules like at the start of the series. But the last time I really been to the one of these is like last hardcore season, which feels so long ago now but let's mine up some mud real quick this is a nice area right here this is perfect and as we head back i want to take a few seconds to say thank you to you guys because when i'm recording this is exactly one year ago today when my first video blew up in a while my hardcore full movie thing that has only over two million views now which is just crazy and that really kickstarted this entire last year and crazy amount of growth from the channel but i'm so happy that people genuinely care about the videos i'm making and yeah that, that's all i wanted to say i'll talk more about some of the history of this channel throughout later on in the series as we get to the end of the series but let's head back and get this house fully built up 
There we are, almost back home. So in order to turn all this mud into packed mud, we're gonna need to collect a lot of wheat. So real quick, let me drop this off in our storage because we need to head over and collect some wheat from our conveniently placed wheat field. That's gonna be easy. And I have to be posting a video every three days, so we don't got a whole lot of time to waste on editing. But I think we could probably spare just enough time for a little bit of a wheat mining montage here. Let's see how it goes. We now need to combine our wheat and our mud, just like this. There's still a few more blocks I want to collect though, because two blocks that will look really good in a gradient with this is the jungle wood and granite. So let's see if we can't find both of those. So let's do our daily tradition of gathering a random stone type. Today it's going to be granite. Granite checked off the list as well. Now all we need to do is we need to chop down some jungle trees. Let's do that right now. I want this build to be a really central, important building in the city, and that's going to start off with a really with a very noticeable foundation. So I'm going to create some pack mud here and go around placing a lot of this down and there's a somewhat decent chance we're gonna end up running out of mud but let's just hope that doesn't happen having such a large foundation like this is really gonna make this build stand out hopefully in a good way all right this is looking great so far so let's go ahead and get some more blocks placed down here yeah this height is looking good for this middle section but the gradient's horrible so i need to change that real quick all right there's definitely something here i don't know what it is but we're gonna have to gather a lot more wheat because i'm already out of the packed mud you see mud's not the problem but actually this might be enough let's start making some more walls and see how we do here are the three front walls in and i'm not sure we're really gonna get a good idea of how this is, will look until we build some roofs on this thing so let's do that right now good news i like this color combination a lot but it's gonna be kind of tricky here to figure out how all these shapes are gonna work let's see if we can figure it out and i may use slabs for this roof just because of how big it is that'd be the first time using slabs in this actually, actually no i've used them over there but one of the first times I've used slabs in a roof, I've just been using full blocks a lot lately for all these builds. So I'm not sure if it'll look out of place or not. We're going to see here in a second. That roof isn't too bad. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I might actually be fine with this full block roof here. We'll see how this turns out. Yeah, I think I like that. I think we're going to stick with this. We got most of that built up and now I'm just sitting here repairing our shovel for a second. Give me one minute here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, check this out. This is looking pretty good. It's still pretty messy. We're gonna do a lot of detail work. I've also started popping out the uh, foundation a little more to see if we can add a little bit more depth to this build. And I really think this is gonna help a lot. All right, this is looking good. I think this helps a lot. Let's go ahead and figure out how our windows are gonna go. I think I wanna do some pretty long, tall windows like this, symmetrical on either side. I think these windows are gonna work out well. I think this is a pretty good template for how we want our windows to be. We're just going to copy it on the other side. And to make it easier to detail this thing, let's put on a floor right away. I'm thinking maybe some dark oak. Well, first of all, we're just going to do regular dark oak for a little pathway through here. And then some dark oak in this pattern. And then we can strip it all, which is pretty satisfying. Let's go through here and grab all this oh yeah this floor looks great so let's build a bit of a staircase up here let's see if we can't use like slabs or something and same thing on this side let's get a door on this thing i'm trying to think what would work well maybe just more mangrove or Let's try bamboo, actually. I've never used bamboo doors. Let's see how those look. Lock there, there, there. Let's get a little spruce frame around here. And then a whole bunch of bamboo. And you know, that's not actually too bad. I'm going to stick with this for now. Before we build the windows or something unfinished I want to do real quick, I want to add a quick gradient or a little bit of detailing, some shading to the roof and what we're gonna do let me find some blocks real quick is use a palette like this mangrove wood but you already have the strip mangrove wood and nether act which looks pretty cool as a darker tone but we're gonna need to chop down a few more mangrove trees to get all the supplies we need There we go. Just a little bit of the shading in the roof really helps. But now we need to start adding a lot more detail to the front of the house. And there's a problem I kind of need to solve with this. You see, this build is really unique 
from the rest of the village so far, and that's a good thing to a certain degree, but I think it's too unique to the point where it kind of doesn't fit in. So we need to start adding features to it that really ties it into the rest of the village. We'll see how that goes. The first way we can do this is by using the same window shutter design we used there and also on pretty much all of our houses in this area to be honest. I always use this design I was talking about in the last video I think. And I'll continue talking about it because it's the one I use. It's the one I think looks best. Let's just go around and see what kind of other small details we can add. Okay this thing is looking so cool but let's focus on the inside for a minute here. So let's start with with this half here let's start by placing down our enchantment setup okay let's go ahead and build some bookshelves like these here's what i have for the interior right now i'm not like completely done with it there's still definitely a lot of stuff a lot of empty areas we need to add to but for now this is a pretty good skeleton for how it's going to look and then one final detail i want to add to the house itself if we head up here is some of these iron bars let's go ahead and add some coarse dirt up here as well and connect these two areas together and with a little detail added out here in the front i can happily say that this build is done and it's looking great to be fair it can always use some detail work and we're going to spend a long time filling this up with books in the future However, a lot of the details we do have make it look great. We need to upgrade our storage room. In our last few episodes, we built this gatehouse, this cactus farm, and even this library over here. And I'm really happy with all of it, except for this over here, our storage room. And this is probably going to be a little bit different than what you've seen before ever in Minecraft. But I want to actually keep this outside. I want to make an outdoor courtyard area here that's going to have our storage room. Because I really don't like the inconvenience of having to go inside a building to get storage. I want it to be as easy as possible to grab. So we're going to be transforming this area today as well as working on one of the houses in the village i'm thinking maybe this one i'm not positive yet but i'm th i'm liking the idea of transforming this one to something with maybe some crimson wood which i'm yet to use in the city crimson is this one i think yeah that color right there could look so cool first thing i want to do is i want to add one more building back here because i feel like this is a too open area maybe not i'm not sure yeah let's go ahead and add one more building or you know what for now let's just destroy this i don't feel like doing this let's go ahead and get this whole floor replaced with coarse dirt here's what i ended up with and i like this a lot we'll probably end up doing this for the rest of the village to be honest but for now let's keep adding some more structure to this i want to put some roofs over these chests and some fencing so no mobs can get in for that we're gonna grab a little bit of spruce wood all right let's grow one or two of these we'll grab two and chop these down i'm gonna put up a little bit of something right here i'm not quite sure what this is to be honest that actually looks really cool but let's go ahead and build build some sort of overhang over top all these materials just to make it seem like they're actually meant to be here and not just a bunch of chest spam you know yeah this is simple but i like it a lot and in order to make this not so weird let's go ahead and use the land to add a back to this instead of like a building or something this is looking pretty good, but I think we need to like balance it a little bit more. I'm going to build a little birch tower right here and see how that looks. Here's how we're looking, and I think this is a nice little upgrade to the area. One thing I'm noticing is I think I want to put like a well here in the middle. I think that'll look cool. Plus, it'll give us a place to get unlimited water from just near our storage. Because I right now, I always find myself running all the way over to that river just to get water. So let's build something here. <clears throat> well looks great. Let's also build a little pine tree right here. Let's see how we can make this look. Hey, that's not bad at all. Yeah, this is perfect. I'm not sure if I'm going to put any more over here or not yet, but I think one is good just for now. And we'll be able to work on this area more later once it's backed up to these houses when we build them later on. I'm really happy with this area, which means I'm safely able to move on to this over here, which is going to be our next build. I'm not quite sure what we're going to end up putting in here yet. Maybe even some furnaces. That could be useful. We don't really have any smelters yet we'll see i really want to use the color of sandstone for these walls so i think we need to head to our portal and over to the desert okay let's grab some sandstone right down here This should be more than enough sandstone, but I totally forgot. We had we gotta head right back to the nether for some crimson wood. Yeah, we got none. The real question is, 
Is there one even nearby? I have no clue. I haven't really been paying too much attention, but we're like 430 days into this world and I haven't used the totem yet. I'm thinking maybe we should try to go to day 1000 without using totems or even elytra. That might be a horrible idea. That might result in a very early death. But I think it'd be a cool challenge and a pretty good achievement if we made it to a thousand days all without using a totem. But I think by day a thousand, I definitely put too much work into this world to take it that risky to say the least. Oh my gosh, why did I almost just do that? I am an idiot for trying to do this. This is so scary. Just completely disregarding like the four months I have put work into this world for this risky, stupid bridge. And thinking about it now, I wasn't really planning on ever building a tree farm, but now I'm thinking I might eventually want to build another tree farm because nether trees suck. I really don't like being here at all. Ah, uh, yes, cool. Okay, 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 okay. I just want to grab like a little bit of the fungi stuff, the grass, why there's so many. I'm recording this in the middle of the night. I do not have enough energy to fight off like 3,000 piglins. How about we just drop down? Oh, there's still so many. Genuine like 10,000 mobs on this one little island. Okay, I think we're safe. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I've evaded death. I mean, in my opinion, every time I nearly die, this makes this world just a little bit, a little bit cooler. That's not cool at all. Why are there so many? Um, let's see. Yeah, how do I deal? With oh my goodness. Leave me alone, please. That worked out. All of that for a stack of this nylon. But what that means is that we'll never really have to go back there again because now that I have it We can just bone meal the saplings right off of it small chances could be enough wood Definitely not hold on something. I definitely need to do real quick because I need to smelt all that sandstone down to smooth sandstone I need to build a furnace thing. We can just build it right here We're gonna go chest chest some hoppers into the furnace and then put a spot to fuel with the coal and a spot to fuel with the material and that should work slowly while we start building this thing up. I want to start by making a pretty dark foundation, but not as dark as deep slate. I want to do tough and cobblestone, I think. All right, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe for this one here. Well, for this one here, we're just going to have sandstone and no supporting pillars like that. But maybe for this one here, we'll add some birch pillars. I don't have enough birch to actually lay them out yet, but let me place these down. Yeah, I mean, why not? I think this will look cool. So let's chop down a bunch of birch trees. There we go. This will be a good size. Let's fill this in with sandstone if we have enough. And the birch is actually darker than I thought, but I think that's a good thing. I think it's good contrast. And for our roof, I'm going to use the crimson, but I'm also going to try something that I saw a while ago on a Jermsy Boy live stream or video or something. I forget. It was a while ago. I want to try to make a one and a half block slope on this roof. If you want, if you're confused by that, let me show you real quick. If we bring a, hold on. If we bring a layer of full blocks like this and then we put slabs on top. Now we bring it up a layer like this with full blocks. And this one and a half block incline is something you almost never see in Minecraft build. So it's pretty unique. Yeah, and it's looking a little messy right now, but of course, this how the, that's how these things go. We're just gonna have to start adding some detail to it till it looks good. And we also want to go ahead and start working on this over here, which will be probably a little bit taller than this. Don't have nearly enough smooth sandstone yet. It's still smelting. It's taking its time. However, I am starting to work on the roof here, and I think we're gonna get something pretty good here. And this almost looks like it could be a pretty cool, like, clock tower for the village. I'm not sure if I'll be able to work that or not but that's definitely a, an idea we'll see let's see if we can't figure out how to turn this into a clock we'll make it round like that and then place some bone blocks behind i think those will work good and then like this or something yeah i think that works i mean i think you can tell what it is at least it's not perfect too bad either yeah I like that we'll keep that we just need to add a whole lot more detail to this because man does that look boring and oh man i have to do the back don't i, I don't want to do the back come on well i'm deciding what kind of detail needs to go on this let me quickly put up a wall here to kind of hide the outside from this village so i'm trying to figure out how to make this look a little better and i'm kind of liking replacing the cobblestone with the mud bricks i think it's a better color combination 
version. Let's try it. Yeah, this is a whole lot better. I really like this color compared to the ugly cobblestone before. And I think it helps blend it into the rest of the city a lot better. There's just something about this. There's just something about this tower here that doesn't sit right with me. I think, hmm, I think what I need to do is maybe add some strip birch pillars on the sides. Because I just can't figure out why this looks so plain and ugly, even though there's a lot of block variation. I think the problem is there's not enough blocks that aren't like per similar enough to a sandstone. So let's see how this looks. Okay, I think this might be able to fix our problem. Let's see how it turns out. That's such an improvement for sure. Let's go ahead and add a door and a little porch up here in the front, I think. Okay, I almost just got blown up. A creeper just blew me off of this thing down on the ground and I landed with three hearts. That could have been really bad. Let's sleep real quick and then get this porch repaired. Oh my gosh, oh, I need to heal. That's scary. All right, please just let me sleep through the night. Oh, this is so annoying. It just destroyed everything. All the blocks are gone too. That's more like it. And this is turning out so great. I'm feeling like I need to figure out a way to detail the roof though. For one more quick detail on the roof, I want to head back to the Mesa real quick because I want to grab a little bit of terracotta. I think we can make magenta terracotta and that'll look pretty good. And what I want to try is using this purple terracotta in our roof. But as this sort of frame thing, I'm not sure what you'd call this exactly, but it's gonna go up on the side, one block in like this, and we'll see how it looks. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad. That's definitely an improvement. Just adds a little bit of detail that the build was missing, and I think that's perfect. Let's do that on the other side as well. And with that, we now have our clock tower built up, which is looking pretty cool, as well as this very detailed storage room, which is gonna hold all of our resources for quite a while. We spent the last couple weeks building a whole bunch of these houses in the city, and we're making pretty good progress, but I wanna speed it up even more by taking out a big portion of the marked area. I wanna work on this little city street here with these three different buildings. We'll have a tower, a middle building here, probably with an acacia roof, and then this one right here, I'm thinking of adding some sort of brown terracotta, brown concrete roof. In terms of what the rest of the build is going to look like, uh, we're going to find out because I don't plan any of these builds if you didn't know. I want to test the combination real quick. If we make some white terracotta, I want to figure out what blocks look good with that. Maybe diorite works? Not really. Or birch? That's still not really it either. That's actually not too bad. That might work. Not perfect. The reason is, I'm, th the reason is I'm thinking the white terracotta will look pretty good with acacia. Yeah, that looks not too bad. So we got to figure out what's going to look good with the white terracotta, but we can worry about that a little later. Before we do any building today, I think what we need right here is a nice big tree, actually. If we head over to my creative world real quick and fly over here to where I'm building these trees, you can see I already have a bunch of tree designs planned out here. And I think I want to build this one inside of our world. Or maybe this one. We'll see which one size fits better. I can't really picture it right now and the best way for us to copy this over is to use lightmatica let me show you here it is this is a small one let's see how this looks in the world this just gives us a blueprint and we actually have to build it ourselves um i like that i don't know if this is too big it kind of blocks the view there's also a part of me that likes having it block house like that you know what i like it right there way better let's build it right there i can't imagine we have that many azalea no not really and then in terms of granite that'll be enough because if you didn't notice we're using granite for the trunk which is a little weird but it also looks cool looks like a skinnier trunk and if we look at our materials list we need exactly 59 azalea leaves and 17 acacia leaves for this tree so we should be able to get that with just a couple trees chopped down. All right, let's hop into a time lapse and get this tree built up. Yeah, I think that was the perfect spot to put this tree. It doesn't block too many of our line of sight, and, and I think it helps. And I think before there was this kind of awkward spot here, but now it's filled up. And over time, once we start adding more trees, it's going to add so much life to this city. Because right now, it feels pretty lifeless with these empty, undetailed areas we got to get back to. But let's get right back to our city street. I think for the tower, I want to go for a cobblestone, mossy cobblestone style. Let's see if we have everything we need. We got plenty of moss. Okay. Okay, so we can actually combine one of these stacks of moss with cobblestone. And this is actually the easiest way to get mossy cobblestone. I'm wrong. Oh, wait, no, never mind. It's similar, just like that. Then I'll take some regular cobblestone, then we'll move up into stone, I suppose. I think that'll be good. That's very tall, but I think it'll work. Let's actually put andesite up here at the very top of the tower. I can't tell if this is too tall or not, but I think think it'll be okay once we have the rest of these built up. I think the gradient on this tower turned out great. And for the roof, I think I want to use deep slate, like the really dark deep slate and then the lighter deep slate. 
So let's put a ring of deep slate, ring of deep slate tiles that is. And then we'll put the lighter deep slate along the sides. Then at the very top, we'll do wall fence and lightning rod and water bucket clutch. Hold on, something's, something's off about it in my opinion. Let's go back up like this maybe. Yeah, that's way better. It looks way more smooth. And of course, we'll put windows and details on this at the end. But right now, we need to build two more houses. Build number two here is going to start with a deep slate base. And to make it a little easier to place the deep slate, like on its side like that we're gonna put a wall of dirt back here temporarily deep slate bricks and then a gradient of these like that we can make sure of course we do that on all sides just repeating with the dirt now we gotta frame out the second floor with spruce which i'm really hoping i have Ooh, okay that be enough probably not it's worth a try and i'm seeing these barrels i want to try to use barrels too okay i'm liking this i'm liking this if we put some fence posts too here i think that adds quite a bit as well we'll do the same thing at the back now let's fill in between these walls with some sandstone i know we just used some sandstone on the last build but that's all right i think it's pretty normal to have some consistency with the block type in villages like this because realistically there's not that many plain colors like this we have to work with so this will be fine and then thankfully we have plenty of acacia wood so we can go ahead and build a really plain roof for now because i'm gonna detail it later don't worry all right yeah that's not bad it's kind of a weird shape but overall i think it works and we'll come back and detail it pretty much the exact same way we detailed that roof over there for our starter base now let's tackle this third house here the actual one uses deep slate for the base but i think instead we're gonna go with tough maybe it's still pretty dark but it's not exactly the same as this one which is nice all right we'll go for a some stone bricks here for the foundation like this and i wish we had tough i wish we had the tough bricks in the game right now but we'll see i'm not sure if that's too much of a contrast to be honest we'll stay with it for now but we are probably gonna need to change it we'll see how i end up liking it at the end okay i think i figured out what i want to do for this we're actually gonna make it three stories tall so let's get this dark oak frame out there we go i think this is gonna work out let's finish this frame this is what we've got and i think it's a lot different from a lot of the other builds but i think it fits in really well into the city for the roof i think a color that contrasts with the orange well but also goes with the jungle is let's grab some terracotta and blue dye and we can look at this blue terracotta it's not used a whole lot pretty much due to the fact that there's no other variations of it but i think just this on its own will work really well as a roof let's try it out Looking good, looking good, but we need to figure out... Let's start detailing this thing. Let's first figure out where we're going to put windows. I'm going to put four up there like that. And then we got to figure out how to add windows to this weird one here. Maybe something like this and this. Yeah, those will work. And we'll put one in the middle too. Now we'll put one way up there on top of the tower. And we can copy the same pattern here on the back. I think we'll put some shutters on these windows here as a little bit of a new style. Okay, to work out these windows, let's pillar up and use full blocks this time and then for some window framing we're actually going to try to use mangrove wood this is definitely something new but i think it works well with the acacia yep i think that works to fill up this blank space on this wall right here i think i'm going to put a chimney maybe right here will be good we're going to use walls which is something i don't normally do but we're going to try it we're at the point where we really just need to work on adding a few last details to this door built right there and door number two we should also probably fill in the floor over here let's make it a little bit nicer inside here and it's pretty tight in here but for one day if we decide to come back here and build an interior on this i think it can look really cool this has been a pretty big episode but one more final detail i need to add is detailing this roof check out this sight line this is just such a cool angle of the village and also if we loop around here this is a pretty cool view too especially from a distance and of course we're going to come back in a future episode and work on detailing all the outer areas but i want to put something here in this central market area i think we should put a fountain in here what does that look like i'm not exactly sure we're gonna have to figure that out and pretty much disregard where the coarse dirt is right now this will probably all be coarse dirt i imagine so where's the center of this area i'd say i'm about on it this will be a pretty large part of the area but i think i like it this is just gonna involve adding some pretty intricate details here and seeing how we like it i think this is a good shape and in terms of details something like this will be good i think this might work once we get some water in there Ooh, but i actually don't like how it covers up the sight line so what if this is just like a pool of water maybe sort of a large well for this area even though there's a river right next to it we can just ignore that yep this is a nice little detail that adds 
that really helped fills up this really open space. And I'm really excited to come back here in a few episodes and get this all detailed out. And with that, our build for this episode is complete. I'm so happy with how this helped fill out the city. And although it doesn't have an interior, the exterior is amazing. Using a lot of cool co color combinations like the mangrove and acacia and the blue terracotta, which is rarely seen on builds. It looks just as good from the back too, as it provides a nice backdrop for our storage system. And as we get more builds in here, this area is going to really feel tucked away and a really cool place to have our storage room. But there's only 10 days left in the year and it might seem like quite a while. However, it's a busy time of year with the holidays and everything. So I kind of got to get going on this village. So today I'm going to be building two separate houses. This one here, which is pretty large and this little diagonal thing that's going to be a tower. As well as if we head over here, there's a small building tucked back here. What exactly are we going to do for these builds though? Well, I'm not quite sure. Well, hold on. There is actually one thing I wanted to try for this. What if we used bamboo for the roof? And then some sort of white block for the walls. We tried to do white terracotta last time. Maybe we could try white terracotta. And mud bricks usually goes well with white terracotta. Let's see if this... Oh, yeah. That's a pretty good combination. I like that a lot. We're going to use this, I think. And then for the smaller house back here, we could try to use cherry wood. I've never really used cherry wood in a build before. So that might be what we try. This build first starts with giant cobblestone tower so let's work that out right now i'm gonna replace this stone outline with tough and then we'll slowly work from tough to cobblestone all the way to the top and i want this to be one of the taller things in the city but not quite as tall as this so we can still see it behind it and hold on i just had this idea now this open area could be a pretty cool animal pen maybe this is like a sheep farm or something and this would have enough space to put a small wool farm in it if we wanted to so yeah i like that idea let's go with that hold on hold on new plan i need one more block that's gonna work in this gradient and i know i think i know exactly what we need acacia logs acacia logs i believe are just slightly darker than tough and it works for the perfect gradient just look at that and that involves us pretty much tearing this down but that's all right it's what happens another huge inspiration i've recently had is to actually try to fill up this village with villagers which is not an easy thing because villagers love to run away and get killed by mobs or fall off of cliffs and die so we're really gonna have to make this village pretty protected for them but i think it could be cool if this is a contained area where we had villagers roaming free it would really add a ton of life to this area because i feel it's pretty lifeless right now to be honest I, so i think in our final episode where we come back and detail everything i'll try to make a villager breeder and add a ton of villagers to this area it's gonna look so cool oh yeah that gradient is so cool i'm happy i decided to do that but right now what we need to do is try and see what a bamboo roof looks on that tower wait i hear mobs in the floor all right where where are they? That's why. There we go. The roof design we're going to use for this tower is, is pretty much completely based off of something I did a few years ago, like three years ago now. Back at the end of 2020, I made a hardcore episode that I never posted, but I built this little tower in it. And I still to this day like how that roof turned out. So I'm recreating it here. And after hours of grinding, it's done. I think we might just have enough spruce wood to finish this, but we're gonna have to get more for the rest of the build. Oh yeah, actually we're gonna need a whole lot more. Hold on. So we can head up here to our logging area and place down one of these big spruce trees. And generally these last me a while. So let's just plant one or two of these and we should be good on spruce for this episode. Yeah, check out all that spruce wood. That should be enough, maybe. Back up here, let's finish off this roof design. Oh yeah, check this out. This is not a bad design. I mean, it's quite a lot different than something I would have built today. Day, but then again, it still fits and it still works well. And it felt kind of weird building the same thing again, like three, three years later. It sounds like I've kind of made a mob farm in here. Yeah, a little bit. And of course, as usual, this tower is looking pretty really boring right now. But, but just like every other house, the details will come in at the end. One detail I do want to try right now, though, is hold on. Is there a spider? There is a spider up here. I want to try using this different kind of bamboo to kind of break up this roof a tiny little bit. Oh yeah, that's good. Just a tiny little variation and it adds quite a bit though now let's get started on the actual house portion of this and help this whole build come together grab our white terracotta and our mud bricks we need more mud bricks and looking over here from this angle i'm realizing i need to make this house relatively low so it doesn't block too much of the rest of the city it's mostly over there to the side the only thing it's really going to cover up from this angle is the greenhouse which is fine with me let's start with our foundation here i think i'll make it two or three blocks tall depending on how it looks 
looks. Mm, something about this isn't quite right. Let's switch over to cobblestone and tough instead. Yeah, that's much better. Time to get some spruce placed down. Some of the areas will be jutted out like this and others won't. Let's go ahead and start peeling up our framing pretty much how we normally do it. Then we'll try out our new wall type here with the terracotta. And for this little jut out here, let's try to make this all mud as a little bit of an accent wall. Yeah, check this out. This is looking great in my opinion. Now it's time to place all of our bamboo on top. I'm getting started with the bamboo roof here and I think it's looking pretty good. It's going to be kind of awkward here because there's lots of weird corners but in my opinion it's a farmhouse so it's meant to not be perfect and also i think it'll just make it look better honestly having the weird imperfections make it look more unique and i get asked a lot why i don't use stairs for the roof i do i still do occasionally like my starter base i think has them but i don't know it's just the style i'm liking right now for some reason it's just a stylistic choice it's unique and i'm sure i won't always build like this i'm sure my building style will be completely different just in a few months but for now this is what i think looks cool and yeah wow Wow, look at this roof. This is really good. It's looking pretty good from all angles, especially this one over here. I think I have nailed. I still think I need to work on this side here. Maybe fix this wall a little bit. And the front sides, the front side's pretty good. Hold on, I have an idea. To make this roof more defined, let's stick it out one more block. Yep, there we go. I think that helps quite a bit. And looking at the city from above, I just realized I did this completely by accident, but I think we have one of like almost every color roof. It wasn't what I was going for, just naturally how it went, what I thought would go good, and I guess it was to have every single color like this. To be honest with you, this tower is pretty huge compared to the build, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I like the style. It's really unique. But let's hop up here and do the same thing we did before with the last roof and make a whole lot of these bamboo mosaic blocks and add them into some detail. But another detail idea I have is one second taking these blocks don't worry they won't stay green and then we can strip them like that mm, i don't know i kind of like just the plain roof still um yeah let's just stick for the plain roof i for some reason i just don't really like it i'm not sure next up let's grab some glass so we can put some windows in i think in this case we'll go fully light gray but i'm out of light gray dye from all this building so we can just pick up some flowers around here and i still need to build something around this iron farm don't i yeah oh my gosh it's so full let's put some windows in the tower first. We're gonna do something like this. Hold on, we need some trapdoors. I craft so many trapdoors. Something like this should be pretty cool. We can do that on all four sides, I think. For the windows, I think I'm gonna add this oak shutter right here like this and then do our regular thing with the spruce for an awning. This is where the entrance will be. We've got a large space here. I think we should fill it with some sort of large bay window type thing like this. I think this will be cool. Same windows back here are done. Nice and simple design. Looks great. And I think we can just maybe do that same window design back here again. We are gonna need a bit more glass though and we have we have no sand do we? That can be fixed pretty easily. A little bit of underwater sand mining here next to our base. I'd love to be able to somehow make it so that the townspeople can get down here to this water because I think uh, it almost nearly goes out to the ocean. We might have to turn this into an actual canal someday. But that seems like a lot of work and a lot of terraforming, so maybe we'll come back to that eventually. Let's drop all this sand in the smelters and head back to finish up our final window. And I'm looking at this spot right here and I think it makes, and I think it'd be a good spot for a chimney, but I want to do something a little different because we've already done a lot of these big ones. So I'm thinking just a real skinny one made out of walls just like a single wall will do well. This one's double wall, but that's a little bit too big for what I'm thinking of. And I'd love to use some bricks, but I guarantee you I'm completely out of... Oh, I'm out of bricks. Looks like we're heading back to the sand mine to get some clay this time. I really need to figure out how to uh, trade with villagers for bricks because I never use villagers and I use bricks a lot. All right, I spent like three years smelting bricks. Let's build this up a little bit. Let's see how it looks. Still don't know if I'm going to have enough, but we'll see. Something like that. And then we'll put the soul campfire because these aren't these ones aren't as bright, but they still produce smoke, which is what we want. Uh, let's slow it down one more block. That's better. Like we said before, this is going to be a sheep farm. So I think we should go ahead and figure out how we're going to be building this pen. I'm liking the idea of using mangrove roots as a fence. I think those will look like a pretty good medieval fantasy fence. And 
land is better than using regular fences, at least. Let's terraform this land so it has a little bit more of a slope to it. Now let's lay out this pen here. I think this shape will be good. And it all has to be like two blocks tall, at least. Or else the sheep can pretty easily escape. Yep, this is pretty good. And I'm pretty sure you can't escape this. We can throw in a few slabs, one and a half block areas to add more variety. But I think we're pretty much good. All right, working on a little porch here that we can access the inside of the house from. Then on the inside, we're going to go simple and do a floor of dark oak. Plenty of space in here for us to try to figure out a automatic sheep farm that we can put in here. But first, before any of that, we need to grab all of our sheep from here. We'll just have to take them groups at a time like this. This is a pretty long process. I'm not sure how many of these sheep are actually going to end up in there. We'll see. To be honest, this is probably enough and we can always breed more if we need to i'm just gonna go around now and get rid of most of these ones at least the colored ones because they look so unnatural in the world i'll leave the light gray ones in fact i think i want to dye all the ones inside the pen light gray so they look a bit more realistic and we can now finally get rid of this ugly pen hundreds of days later let's find some dye let's see if 25 dye is enough to get all these sheep kind of close only a few more you know what let's make some white sheep as well i think the design that's gonna fit best in this house is going to be a design by enx04 and i've made many farms by him before especially last season and these farms always work great and they're super easy as well to make this farm we need glass a bunch of leaves dirt a good amount of slabs we'll use jungle slabs because they have a lot of jungle wood we need six pistons for some reason we're gonna need two dispensers as well so we have to craft two bows and then make them one at a time i hate crafting dispensers so first we need to dig out a five by seven little trench here and this farm uses this weird torch burnout mechanic where the torch flickers like that for a little bit then burns out which is kind of weird but i guess whenever grass grows there it powers the torch again which shears all the sheep which is interesting it's a really unique design for a sheep farm and then we'll have two dispensers on top which will shear sheep on either side there we go place trap doors down here to make it easier to put the sheep in i believe we need to get six sheep inside of here that shouldn't be too difficult right all right they seem to be in line let's get going these first two in here one two three four five and six should be coming right in and we can't have all 16 colors but i just need to pick the 12 most important for now we can make a better wool farm later but to be honest i don't find myself using many of the colors so let's just pick a few of the important ones i think i want two light gray sheep orange red brown green if we have it i have a cactus farm i totally forgot we built this cactus farm at the start of the month and i just haven't checked on it how has it been doing we have been loading this area the whole time and hey, it's not bad. That's kind of bad. It's all right. I think I want a black one and a dark gray one. And we can keep a white one as well. So that's two, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. We can also probably make a cyan one since that color is pretty dull enough to fit in good into the city. So that'll use with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, we need one more. We'll go for yellow. Actually, you know what? Let's do purple. Okay, there we go. That's our first holding cell. We now need to push glass down on these sheep like this. So I'll go ahead and use buttons and pistons to push the trap doors and the glass down onto the sheep. And they're all lined in there good, according to the video. Now we just gotta repeat the process real quick, and here is the farm done. And you can see why I hid it in a house. It's disgusting, but it actually, it actually works. Every time that grass grows, it shears every single sheep in there, which produces quite a bit of wool. And I'm pretty happy to say that the wool farm here is done. So let's move on to our second house, back behind the village. And we need to figure out what we're gonna build this out of. I'm thinking mangrove wood because mangrove wood is a block that appears in a lot of the houses so it only really makes sense to have a second house here made out of the red wood and i think for the house itself i think just a simple oak wood house would do fine for this We've gathered up a bunch of materials that we're going to need, a lot of birch and a lot of mangrove. And I think we're going to use mangrove for the frame, which is something I haven't really done yet, ever. So let's try that out. And I think we'll do it in a quick time lapse.
I actually really like the unique blocks we use for this house. The regular mangrove logs and especially these roots is something I've just never used before in a build. But I think it actually fits not too bad. Right now, I'm sort of planning ahead and trying to figure out how we're going to keep villagers safe inside of here. So I'm putting up a wall between these two houses here. Another thing I've been wanting to do is replacing this big courtyard area with mostly horse dirt. It's going to leave us a lot of room to add some details to like market stands and different wagons and carts and stuff like that in the future. Hey, look at that. Our gate's actually working. Yeah, that's much better. This area feels much more like a busy city area. And we'll be back to work on it in a few episodes. And with that, I think today's episode is more than complete. We built two great houses. This shepherd's house here, which houses our wool farm, which I think should be working. Not too bad. Yeah, look at that. We already have a ton of wool. This is great. Aside from that, we also built this small house over here. And we'll have to come back here and figure out exactly what this house does. Like what village profession is going to live in there. But I'm also very happy with how this works. But I'm also just very happy with how this looks tucked back here in the back of the village. Our city only needs one more house and it's a giant mansion. I picked the one day where I had barely any time to build this mansion. That's right. I only had one night to build this entire thing and edit the video. That's why it's a little shorter. Sorry. So let's not waste any time. Today we have a mansion to build. I'm not exactly sure if it's a mansion, but it's probably going to be the biggest, biggest footprint of a house in this city. I laid out this huge area for some reason, and so far I've stuck to our layout, so I think I'm gonna do it for this last build here. This is part 8 of our 30 day series, and our second to last episode. Once we build this, I need to detail out this whole city, but this build is gonna be tricky, because I only have really one day to do it. And I think I wanna go for something with some... I wanna use some more monotone colors, like maybe cobblestone base, a white kind of building section with concrete and calcite and diorite, and then deep slate for the roof. It's simple, but it'll also help it stand out from the rest of this very colorful city. It seems like we have enough deep slate here and more than enough cobblestone. I'm gonna need to grab a lot more concrete or at least at least white dye. And then something I'm gonna have to gather first I think is some spruce wood. Hold on, I gotta deal with these guys real quick. There we go. Alright, I just made a huge spruce tree here so let's tear it down. That should be enough spruce wood for what we're doing today. We now need to go grab some sand in order to make white concrete. We'll be doing a gradient similar to this build here, I think. Let's convert all this concrete and we can actually use this weird water thing we made. Let's start by building this foundation. You know what? Let's start by just making it all cobblestone and then we can replace it with some other blocks later on. Okay, we're looking good, but I think I want to... I wanted to add a sort of balcony thing right here to see how this looks. I don't think that's the word actually, like a raised up deck up here that people can stand on. Something like this shouldn't look too bad. Now we can go ahead and work on this framing. I picked a pretty big build to have to do it all in one. Day. I mean, I'm excited to see how this turns out, but also I do not have the kind of time to be doing this big of a build. And I think I want to make it even taller than this. I want one section of the building to be three stories, which is going to be kind of crazy. So let's go to the central section here and make this go up another story. Is that too tall? I feel like that's too tall. Yeah, that looks good. This is going to be pretty huge though. Let's add the second and third story walls out of all of our different white blocks. I think I'll even use the concrete powder here. This is such a rough layout right now, but I'm not hating it. And I think to complete the layout, we should just throw on the roof with just deep slate. This is going to be the most basic of basic templates. I think it'll give us a good empty space to just start planning out all the details. I like this shape quite a bit for this top roof. Let's figure out all the other confusing bunches of roof. Although this is just a rough template here, I still want to figure out how I can add some other colors and details to this to make it a bit more unique because it's pretty boring at the moment, to be honest. Yeah, I like this orange color with the white. I think that'll be cool. This wall is really boring, so I want to add another section here. And I want to make it out of the terracotta we were using earlier. Oh yeah, that makes it look so much better immediately. A little bit of a variation there helps so much. But it feels like the roof isn't tall enough over here. What if we add a a back tower. Let's try 
try to put a dark oak roof on this one instead of deep slate. I think that tower works. Um, yeah, we can work on fitting it more into the build as we go, but it's not too bad now. Let's also try to add some windows here. Oh yeah, these windows are actually a really cool design. Now hear me out. I had an idea for this railing up here that could look kind of cool. If we head over to our iron farm, we can grab a whole bunch of iron blocks, which means we can craft a whole whole lot of anvils something like that this build is feeling pretty huge and i'm liking this angle especially i'm ready to go ahead and start adding all the details to make this more manageable let's go layer by layer slowly adding detail to each one starting out with the base layer i want to change all this cobblestone into some different variations of blocks like light gray wool and stone that gradient's looking good but i want to add a few doors down here one right here probably and then and one down around here under the thing. I also want to leave some room for some windows. What we're going to do for these windows is add this mangrove in the back and then put the yellow glass in the front. Eventually when there's light shining through there, the yellow will really help make it seem like there's stuff going on inside even when I'm just hiding it. Yeah, check this out. All these windows are really starting to help it come together and we are quickly running out of time so i need to add some last details here to really make the outside of this look great because of course i'm not going to be able to get to the inside today let's start by replacing all the ground up there with coarse dirt all right that already makes it look a whole lot better i think a cool detail here would be replacing some of these pillars with composters i think that looks cool an important thing here that i kind of forgot was adding a bit of detail to this roof nothing crazy just something to make it more than just this repetitive deep pattern here so let's throw down our uh stone cutter thing and then to detailing and with that we've pretty much run out of time for this video although this episode is over i would say this build is mostly done i mean don't get me wrong i'm super happy with how it's looking but there's still a lot more detail we could have added and we're still planning to add i have to get this video uploaded for tomorrow but for our finale i'm gonna come back and detail this whole city like crazy and add villagers and everything which is gonna be crazy it's gonna be the probably the biggest video out of the series it's gonna take a long time and that might, that might involve coming back to this build i know i eventually want to add an interior on this thing and actually make this somewhat of maybe my base because there's a lot of room in here this is it after spending the last month building the city we only have two days left in the year to finish it this video was a race against the clock to finish the city filling it with details and life stick around to the end of the video because i'm going to talk about how this video series is going to change how i make content forever oh and by the way if you want to explore the city for yourself you can download it on my brand new discord server for free which we'll talk about more at the end of the video. Welcome back to the finale of my Minecraft Hardcore City series. We're up on top of this mountain right now collecting a bunch of gravel for coarse dirt. And you can see our city in the distance. This is the first time I've really gotten this view of it, but it's pretty cool. We are way under 100 hours left in the year, and I do not have very much time to finish this at all. There's a lot of details I want to add. I want to make it completely villager proof and add a bunch of villagers. But the details are the first hard part, of course. So let's go around this mountain collecting a ton of gravel, and we can head back down and get to work on on the detailing. Let's take all our gravel and combine it with our dirt to make a ton of coarse dirt because there's like quite a few areas here I want to fill in with coarse dirt like this area over here. I want to make this into a market area because of how open it is. That's a whole lot better but there's an but something I want to do in these big areas is like how our storage room is over here with all this packed mud and regular dirt and grass and stuff like that. I don't know if I have enough mud to be honest, which could be a problem. I'd rather not have to go to a mangrove swamp, but we might not have a choice here. Let's see. Okay. Just, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be enough. Let's find out. Yeah, I mean, this looks really cool, but I just don't know if I have enough packed mud. I really don't think I do. This is such a cool look that it's worth it for me to head to the mangrove swamp and grab some more mud. We also have a bunch of wheat we need to gather. And back to placing packed mud. This is just such an improvement. This is such a cooler design than just the boring coarse dirt. And I'm going to keep carrying it around here. With all this laid out, the first thing I want to do is finally put a bridge here. I've been just jumping over the river and that's kind of a problem. What are we going to build? it out of maybe some mang we don't have any mangrove i'm not getting any i think we'll have something like 
this here. I want it to go up pretty far. We'll just do some sort of weird stone brick designs. In order to keep the villagers from breaking into our village, I'm going to put up some walls across some of these areas here with spruce and oak wood. For this right here, we're going to do a wall and then build up something like this. Yep, that looks good. We've now got walls surrounding this pretty much whole village area here. As you can see, I don't think there's any easy way for the villagers to escape, but then again, I'm not really sure. Next up in this open area here, I want to put a bunch of market stands for the villagers to sell some stuff. That helped fill in this area so much, but I still want to add some more details. I want each of these stands to actually sell something. I'm not quite sure what exactly, but let's take a look at what we got. I first want to have a stand that sells plants so we can grab some pots and some leaves and stuff like that. Let's see how this turns out. Another stand I want to do is honey. So if we grab some honeycomb from up here. But before we do that, let's finish up this plant one here. Yeah, I think that's perfect. For the bee one here, we're going to put some nests behind it. First, we got to put them on top of campfires. And then we can use some item frames to display items and use the data to hide them like that. We can also have some candles as if they're selling candles here because these are made out of beeswax anyway. So that makes sense. You know what? What I can do is actually put villager works stations behind these counters so that the villagers will actually work there i think that'd be pretty cool like if we put a composter there a villager farmer villager should come behind there and then maybe for this one we could do a butcher i think that'd work back behind this stand let's clear a little area here i have an interesting idea for a build just like this we're gonna have two pillars with this mangrove log here in the middle and a campfire underneath it kind of looks like it's cooking a piece of meat here the butcher's workstation is a smoker so we're gonna put that right here and then give it a real small chimney coming out the top here that'll work and then we'll use some item frames to display some food for the fisherman build here i'm gonna keep it really simple i just want to put one or two fish but i don't have any fish yet so let me fix that we can go ahead and just fish in here and building the village like this making it villager proof or villager safe is really constricting like it means i can't place a lot of detail blocks like composters and barrels too freely and it also means i have to really really heavily defend the village and light everything up but i also think it's a fun challenge and i think having the villagers around will add a lot to the world and two fish should be enough there we go with that out of the way in this area right here pretty detailed we can come back i want to try to build a couple trees right now there's one in particular over here uh i can't go that way one in particular over here i'm going to use this schematic for it. this is based on the smaller version of the big yellow tree we have over there so let's hop in a time lapse and build this real quick. I really like these trees. They're pretty unique, but I think they add quite a bit to the area and it's something you never really see in any other world. So that's cool. I think I want to add another tree maybe over here. I have a taller version of this tree here in a schematic. So let's try it out and see how it looks here. I think we'll put it right here. The tree is all done and it is very tall, but not too bad. Some of the proportions are kind of weird, but it's okay. It's a tree. It's not meant to be perfect. This city is really starting to come together, but there's still a lot of empty spaces. Some of them can just be filled in with bone meal like this, and they'll look perfectly fine. Not everything has to be extremely detailed. It's important to have some negative space too in these builds to help give some contrast. I don't know if contrast the word, but help highlight the more detailed stuff. There are some areas though that do really need builds. Like I think here, I want to put a wheat field, a little tiny wheat field, so we can actually have a villager that's taking care of it let's build this real quick we need to put down some water and then i think i'll put a lantern as well so we can keep mobs from spawning here simple enough but once the wheat grows in like that it's gonna look great over here some random detail ideas i have is doing something like this where we're gonna put potatoes on here but before they finish cooking we're going to extinguish the fires so they're just sitting there kind of an interesting detail and then i'm also going to put some of these beehives down here these kind of look like barrels or crates or something then we'll also place down some pots over here. Random spam of details. There's just a lot going on right there. And as it starts to get towards night, I'm realizing we need some sort of light source here in the village. So let's see if we can get a cool enough design here. Simple, but I think that works. Let's place that around the area. This area here is still a little bit too open. I think I want to at least add like a cart and maybe some barrels or something like that. Here's how our cart's looking. And I think we should put some 
pumpkins in it maybe we do have a pumpkin patch right outside the city so that makes sense let's also add some of these note blocks as barrels over here there we go that looks decently like a pile of crates i can't actually use barrels because of the dumb villagers but it's okay over here i'm gonna place some of these bookshelves i don't think i have books to fill them with but i think they're a good detail especially when they're filled with books for books i'm gonna think i believe one of my villagers trades books so if we go over here does this guy yeah he does have bookshelves okay we need to get a couple of these and then these break down into the three books a piece let's take all these books and fill this up i've never really had the chance to use these blocks before now but this is a really cool detail in order to fill up this area over here i want to make i think i want to make another small crop field here this one can have carrots in it i'm gonna put up a boundary like this with with some oak on top. I only have two carrots right now, so let's just use them to spread them out bone meal them and then grow some more and simple enough that is done i do think we could use a small tree over here though so let's use the same kind of color we were using for the bigger ones this looks pretty close to granite at this point all we really have left to do is go through the village and figure out what areas still need lit up we can use this mod called mini hut to see exactly the light level of everything and the only time we have to worry is when their light level is red like that pretty much the only places where that's the case is the roofs and i think the best way we're gonna be able to add light to all these roofs is probably gonna be glow lichen it's pretty subtle and it gives off a subtle amount of light so it shouldn't be too noticeable let's head over to this cave and see if we can spot some yep i see some right there already this is perfect and i'll just use bone meal to spread this everywhere so we can cheer it right up let's use the lichen to light up some of the area around the city so that hopefully zombies can't find their way in i just spent a while making sure there's absolutely no surface that's not lit up here i I use lichen. I use the I use the glow lichen all around here. You can see that pretty much all the outside grass nearby, as well as all of the roofs, should be completely lit up, just subtly enough to where you can't really notice it, but mobs still won't spawn. So you know what that means. It is time for us to add our villagers. I want to figure out exactly how many we're going to include. So we're gonna need a workstation for all of them, as well as beds for all of them. We can put a composter in here for a farmer. We have a second composter here, then a barrel that makes three, four five six our seventh is going to be a lectern inside of the library here our eighth is this fletching table here and i'll continue to place maybe around 20 of them throughout the village and see how we end up all the job sites are in place we need to get some villagers over here the problem is i don't know if there's any villagers left in the village which could be kind of bad it sort of seems like they all died and if that's the case i'm not sure how i'm gonna get villagers they are all dead what do i do oh hold up oh, of course i totally forgot these this iron farm has villagers i don't really want to tear apart the iron farm but then again this design kind of sucks and i say that but it's gotten a lot of iron but they won't even spawn on it it doesn't work how it's intended so maybe i should just the villagers from here yeah let's take these villagers but before we steal them let's hop into a time lapse and build up a breeder It's done, and I know it's absolutely disgusting, but we're just gonna leave it for now because I don't really have time to fix it. Don't worry, I'll either cover it up with a build later or just tear it down. We'll see. Let's go ahead and build a rail line that takes us all the way there so we can get these villagers stocked up. All right, got both of them in a minecart. Let's push them to the breeder. Come on. Ugh. It's gonna take a while for the village. It's gonna take a while for this to start working. So in the meantime, let's set up a rail system to get them out of here. There is actually one in here already because I threw them some carrots. So let's test this out and see if it works i went afk for a while came back and i think this should be enough villagers so let's send them off one at a time and get these guys loaded into our village let's release these guys and see if they die or not they're definitely gonna die but oh well that's fine who cares oh yeah look at this he's working behind the counter this is shouldn't be his counter he should be over here but oh well that's fine and yep here he goes he's escaping already i filled up this village with a lot of villagers and it's sort of working there's also one's getting caught in the river but i think they're kind of finding their way back eventually this project after a month of hard work that last clip was recorded right before the new year i'm recording this outro here on the first day of 2024 which is going to be a big year for this channel i'll explain why but first let's take a look at our finished product
What I did differently about this series than anything else I've ever done on this channel is show way more of my building process, and it was actually, surprisingly, a lot of fun. The YouTube algorithm is shifting, and I want to be part of that shift. If you haven't noticed on YouTube, some of the most recent people getting success aren't the crazy Mr. Beasts or Airax. It's the people who are more authentic and more real and don't have as crazy paced videos, because I think people are starting to get sick of those. Just look at Ryan Trahan or Sam Sulik or someone like that doing what they want to do, not following some sort of algorithm and finding a ton of success. That's what I want to do in 2024. I still want to make videos that people will watch, videos that take weeks or months to make that include some crazy big builds and huge contributions to this world. But I also want them to be a little bit longer or slower and be a bit more authentic than the crazy paced Mr. Beast type videos you see a lot on YouTube nowadays. How will that go? I'm not quite sure. All I know is that this series is the most fun I've ever had making YouTube videos and I want to keep it going. So I hope you are excited for what I have planned in 2024 because I know I am. And like I said in the intro, if you want to explore this map for yourself, you can head to my brand new Discord and download this map for absolutely free. They're not normally going to be free because my maps get stolen a lot, but I wanted to give you guys this gift as a thanks for all the support on the series. Eh, thank you. That's all for now. I will see you very soon. Thanks so much for watching.